Hey, what's up everybody? This is CLS all in one. I recently installed some gelled wind flush fin windows in my home. These flush fin windows have a built-in exterior window trim, which makes installing these windows a whole lot easier. These are by far the easiest windows I've ever installed. The gelled wind flush fin windows are designed mainly for replacement or retrofit applications, but you can also use these in new construction as well as I will demonstrate in this video. These flush fin windows work best with a flat and level surface siding, such as T111 sidings, but these could also work with a stucco or concrete finished surface and other flat and level exterior home surfaces. For other home sidings, such as lap siding, that do not have a flat exterior surface will not be very compatible with these gelled wind flush fin windows, and I would recommend using a different style of window. Here's a look at the windows I will be installing today. These are the Geldwin V2500 flush fin series, and these have a built-in exterior trim that's about half inch thick and two inches wide. To prepare for these windows, it was fairly easy. I started with applying house wrap to the sheeting on my house and covered approximately half of the frame window opening with the house wrap as well. Then I used some window flash and tape to completely waterproof the framed window opening. Here's a closer look at the flash and tape. It is self-adhesive, and I apply this to the frame opening and overlap the house wrap. After that, I installed some T111 siding and painted it as well. Then I nailed a couple of shims to the bottom of the frame opening, which will help me maintain at least a quarter inch gap between the window frame and the frame opening, which will be sealed with foam. To figure out the correct size for my windows, I measured the rough framed window opening, which is 59 inches tall by 48 inches wide, and gave these measurements to the window department at Home Depot where I purchased these windows. The main frame on the windows measures one half of an inch smaller both directions, so this window is 58 and a half inches tall by 47 and a half inches wide. But the outside of the window where the trim is located measures 60 and a half inches tall by 49 and a half inches wide, which is plenty enough to cover the window opening. So my windows are now ready to be installed. And the first thing I did with my windows was I removed the screen and the slider window panel, which makes the window much lighter and easier to install. Next, it's time to test fit the windows to make sure there's no issues with the fitment. What I wanna achieve is at least a quarter inch gap between the window frame and the frame opening. Once I have my window in the correct position, I can make a small mark on the top and side edges of the window trim for a reference of where the window should be located. And as you can see right here, I have at least a quarter inch gap between the window frame and the frame opening. So after I've determined there's no issues with the window fitment and the correct placement of where the window should be, I can go ahead and remove the window. Now for my windows, I'm not installing a drip edge because I have a 16 inch roof overhang that's fairly close to the top of my windows. So a drip edge is not necessary. But here's an example of how I could install a drip edge for my window. I would need to mark exactly where the top piece of trim on the window would be located on the siding. Then carefully cut the siding and this area out. Then cut a piece of drip edge the same width as the piece of siding that was just removed. Then slide the drip edge under the siding and reinstall the piece of siding that I just removed and seal all the cut edges with caulking. So that's what I could do for a drip edge if necessary. Now it's time to apply some sealant to the outside of the window opening. And for this, I'll be using some clear silicone for windows and doors. So right here, what I'm doing is applying a bead of silicone that's 3 8 of an inch wide and 3 8 of an inch high. And I'm applying this bead right at the edge of the opening all the way around, but leaving a couple small gaps at the bottom for weep holes, just in case there's ever any leaks. And here's an up close look at that bead of silicone. I got that right at the edge of the opening going all the way around, and you can see it's pretty thick. Now it's time to grab the window and go ahead and set that in place and try not to make a mess with the silicone that I just put around the opening here. So I'll set it in the bottom first on top of the shims, then place it in position and line it up with the pencil marks that I put on there earlier. And while placing this window into position, I make sure to firmly press the window into the opening to make sure it has a strong bond 
with the bead of silicone that I just laid. Now it's time to secure the window on the inside of the window jam with one screw. And while I'm doing this, I make sure to pull in on the window at the same time I'm securing it with the one screw. That way the trim is nice and tight with the siding. And I'm also making sure not to over tighten this screw because I'm trying to maintain a quarter inch gap between the window frame and the frame opening. After securing the window with one screw, it's time to check the window with a level to make sure it's plumb and level. This step may require loosening or tightening the one screw for adjustment. And shims can be used in the areas where securing the window with screws. Now it's time to secure the window on the opposite side with another screw. And again, I make sure to pull in on the window at the same time I'm securing it with the screw and not over tighten it because I'm trying to keep the window level. After that, I can go ahead and secure the window with screws every two foot around the inside of the window frame while making sure to pull in on the window and not over tighten any of these screws. And while doing this, I also check for level and plumb periodically to make sure the window remains level. Here's a closer look at the screws on the inside of the window frame. And now I'm gonna go ahead and secure it on the top of the window frame with one screw right in the middle. And again, we're trying to go every two foot. So this window is four foot wide, so one in the center will work just right. On the bottom of the window, it actually has a track that you can lift up and pop out with just a screwdriver. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this out, then secure the window at the bottom with one screw in the middle. So let's take a look at all the screws so far. I have one on the bottom, one at the top in the middle, and a couple on the sides. At the bottom of the window, after reinstalling the track, that does conceal the screw to where that doesn't show. But for the other screws on the window that do show, the window does come with some plugs to hide those screws. Now these are optional, but they will make your window look a little bit nicer. So right here, I'm using a spade 3 8 drill bit, and I'm drilling a hole right where I want a screw to be located. Now the frame of these windows are double walled, so I can drill through this first wall and there's still one more wall to go through. So you wanna be careful only to drill through the first wall. That way we can now secure the window with a screw through this hole. And after securing the window with the screw, we can now plug that hole with these plugs that do come with the window and then tap it in with the back of a screwdriver. And now the screw is hidden by this plug. After fully securing the window with screws all the way around, we can now put the screen back in place and the sliding portion of the window as well. And we want to make sure to go ahead and test it and make sure it closes properly and locks and lines up nice on the edges. In some situations, you might have to make some minor adjustments to get the sliding portion of your window to score up with the window frame. So right here, what I'm doing is just barely tightening the bottom corner to get it to square up better with the window frame. Here's what it looked like before. You can see that the window slider is not quite square with the frame and here is after. Now it's square with the frame and good to go. Here's a look at what I've done so far from the outside of the window. And here's a little bit closer look. And this window does have a fresh air ventilator and I'll talk about that here in a few. Now it's time to seal the outside edges of the trim with some sealant. And right here, I'm using some clear sealant that is paintable. And I really like this particular sealant. It goes on with kind of a milkish white color, but when it dries, it's super clear. And when applying this sealant, I make sure to go all the way around the window trim, but also make sure to leave a couple weep holes at the bottom of the window that line up with the other weep holes. And after this sealant dries, the windows would now be considered finished on the exterior of the house because I've already painted the siding and there's no trim work to be done because the trim is built into the windows, which is my favorite part about these windows. Now it's time to seal the inside of the window frames with some window and door spray foam. With this foam, I seal the quarter inch gap that's between the window frame and the frame opening and go all the way around the opening. I prefer to use expanding foam so I can seal the window frame as airtight as possible. However, this type of foam can be very messy if you don't have much experience with it. To protect your windows, you can apply masking tape to the edges of the window to keep any expanding foam from making a mess on the window frame. Then after the foam dries, you can carefully cut it away and remove the tape. After sealing the inside of the window frames and allowing it to dry, 
you can then trim or break off any excess shims that are sticking out. Then you can install your casing and interior trim. Here's a closer look at one of the windows in operation after being cased and trimmed. And I'm really happy with the performance of these windows. And here's a look at that fresh air ventilator that I talked about earlier. And this is optional. And I actually wasn't even aware that I picked this option, but I'm kind of glad I did because this is a cool feature. So basically what this is, is a vent that opens and allows fresh air to come through your window without actually opening your window. So your windows can remain locked. For example, if I was to leave the house, I could just open these up. That way some fresh air is coming through the house and my windows are still secure. Here's a couple before pictures after installing the windows, but before I got the exterior of the house finished. And here's a picture after finishing the exterior of the house. In total, I installed eight different flush fin windows. I've got six windows that are on the upper floor and then two windows that are in the basement. Okay, it's time for me to go. And hopefully this video helped you out with information regarding the Jeldwin flush fin windows. And now I'm going to leave you with some footage of installing a flush fin window back in October of 2019. And on this day, it was eight degrees below zero. It was freezing. But because these windows are so simple to install, I was able to get this job done. Well, at least part of it. Have yourself a great day and I'll see you next time. And if you like this video, if you could hit that like button. everyone thanks for watching this is CLS all in one if you want to hear more from me please like and subscribe and to see more of my videos just click any of these categories to see more